Hi, everybody. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good evening. Whichever one it is for you, Rob says. All right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So welcome, everyone. Um, we always talk about the code of conduct, you know, mutual respect for everyone here, being kind, you know the rules. Any new faces? We've already introduced ourselves, I think. We met Brian. Hello. Welcome, Brian. And um, everyone else, welcome as well. So now we have talked about a few things regarding KubeCon. Oh, sorry, I can't even spell it. I have to back up. KubeCon. Um, and it's Paris. And um, we're going to start talking about that. And we're going to follow that up with um, 7G talking about KubeCon. Yeah, it's going to be here. It's a week of KubeCon announcements. So we're going to be focusing on Meta and... Sorry, CFP announcements. Um, and it will be January 24th uh, is the scheduled announcement. And then in-person scholarship award announcements on January 26th. So watch for those announcements to be coming. And then some other news, only, only one was adopted. Um, so only one, I'm sorry, the interpreter's not understanding this, one was adopted. Talk. I'm sorry, what was that? One Catherine? talk. One session. Talk? Yeah. Oh, one, one session. So more to come. Yeah, Catherine, um, how about you go ahead and talk about additional info on CFP plans and uh, we'll let you go ahead and fill us all in on that, if you would. Yeah, so uh, I know there was a little bit of disappointment that we only got one talk. Um, and I just wanted to give a little context. So diversity talks all go into one track. There is no diversity track, right? So there is a cloud native experience track, which includes business value, which is um, companies who are telling the value that they get out of open source, nothing to do with diversity or anything, right? It also includes community, and that is anything community related, open source, and diversity is part of that track. So, right? Then we have startup, which is new. I don't know what that means. And then there's misadventures, which are like, things that happened that went wrong with open source. So people share misadventures, basically. So that's like four big topics. Community is one. And a subtopic of that topic is diversity. Uh, and so I was looking at last KubeCon, there were 19 talks in this track. So that's almost five talks per topic. So that's only five talks for community. Accessibility got one, but then you have all the other community topics. So just wanted to give a little context so i'm assuming they have like they were saying okay we got one diversity then we got one about open source so they're trying the way they do it is kind of like trying to give everyone a little bit and being fair and they had to pick one um diversity is not a huge emphasis um so i hope we can change that a little bit but that's something that has to come I don't know, like if, if that's a, it's, it's a technology, a technology conference after all, but I just wanted to provide a little context so as to, it's not that, oh, we have 200 talks and we just got one accepted. It's like 19 talks, five talks, and that's like our niche. So uh, just, you know, and I mentioned that to Sandeep, um, I worked for a company that submitted talks every single KubeCon, we never got one it's very, very competitive. So let's see it still as a, <laughs> as a win. It's, it's, it's very hard and very competitive. Uh, so just a little context, um, uh, it is a big uh, conference. Um, and then the other thing, I believe we got the, oh, someone was saying something? Oh, I saw someone signing, but I think not. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, so I believe we got the project Pavilion Kiosk 
um because they asked me for hours and things like that i haven't gotten any confirmation uh so i put the shifts in uh the agenda you can see it we don't have to kind of we st first need to get scholarships and so on but um it would be like the morning shifts uh, and again as a reminder i think that's really good um, for people who have been at KubeCon, you know, uh, there is a project pavilion. So that you have like mini booths where projects can talk um, to um, to the community. And that would be a booth from our team. And the goal is to encourage people to come and talk to someone who's deaf and hard of hearing because most people have never met anyone. And it's just like, just a way to have a nice conversation. Uh, and then so once we know who will attend, we will kind of um, have break it out by shifts and then everyone may be there uh, once or twice for an hour and a half or two hours. Um, so that's kind of the idea. Um, any questions regarding that? All right, sounds good. <clears throat> and then, so um, we built that Google form to build an interpreter database. Um, there is the link there. How do we get interpreters to Summit? Like you all work with interpreters. Please send the link to your favorite interpreters so they can sign up. We got a few, we got a few gibberish one where I'm like, this is definitely not someone serious. <laughs> but, uh, let's, let's start building that database. Uh, the link is there. There is also a tweet from the CNCF. They've been promoting it. And from that tweet, one person signed up. So it's very slow. Uh, so please share that um, within uh, your network as well. But do send the form to your interpreters. Again, we're not looking only for ASL. We're looking for any sign language because this database will also be something that will be used maybe by uh, my example is always uh, Milad who wanted to attend the um, um community event and um the commute like the what's it called like the the meetup yeah. the cncf uh, meetup group there and so that would be something that they could use right so it uh yes it wouldn't be for kubecon kubecon would be asl and uh, is of course but we're also interested in all other languages because someone may need it right so please share that Any questions regarding that? Okay, and then the last, oh. Um, do you, you wanna add your favorite interpreters on Slack? We can send you a Slack, on the Slack channel too, right? And mm. then um, if you add it to the Google form if, you, form, if you have it and let your interpreters know. Well, they should send it, they should um, sign up. Yeah, because we're also asking for references and we're asking for um, if they have video recording or anything, because I saw that the quote like some. Yeah, we just need to have like an, a way to make sure that interpreters are real. People who have real experience. Um, and so uh, we added like the references and and video recordings if available as well. So they need to sign it up because they have to say like what la sign languages they can uh, they they can sign it um in what uh, uh what certifications they have uh references so there's a little information so it's not just like they they should sign up themselves so the only thing you should do is basically send them the link and they can take it from there and encourage them to participate of course Yeah, um, we could also be able to vet them as well, interpreters, and uh, chat with them, maybe have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them to see how well they do and how they fit and go forward from there. And last thing, uh, oh, I just put update for the uh, award. Uh, I was going to write something. Um, so basically, last time we talked about uh, the award, the CNCF is... Uh, was interested in um, giving an award to companies who are doing a great job at accessibility. And I thought that was something that was every uh, KubeCon. And then I rushed <laughs> into, well, we rushed into creating that um, uh, award idea and so on. Uh, but then I was told that it's only uh, in North America. So we have a little bit more time. 
Um, so you, you can see a little bit the framework there in the link. Uh, something that someone from the CNCF told me is we have to restrict or a recommendation. Uh, we ha need to restrict who can participate because otherwise they said it's going to be crazy. Um, for instance, for the other awards, they have like they send it to very specific people within the community and let them participate. Uh, they said that if we just send a form where anyone can submit, it will be very chaotic and not um, will not lead to the results that we want to. So I'm not exactly sure how we can do that, but that's something that we have to um, think about is like how, who who will we ask um, to participate and how do we reach them? Um, but nothing we have to worry about right now, we can do that in Slack. I just wanted to give an update because we talked about this last time and it seemed like something we wanna do very soon. And uh, Sandeep has his hand raised. Ah, Catherine. So for this award, uh, it will not be in the KubeCon EU, but only in the KubeCon North America. The award? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And one more thing I wanted to say was, uh, so for the interpreter database, I reached out to my network and what they told me is that uh, before, you, before the interpreter starts to interpret, you should go and have a talk one-to-one -one with the interpreter. Uh, let them know what you are going to speak about so that they get familiar with the terminology. So then they will be able to interpret more accurately. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes uh, definitely sense. But the database is just to reach. It's the first step is so we can yeah. identify interpreters, right? Because right now it's like. I don't know. It's really hard to find interpreters who are familiar or comfortable with uh, interpreting uh, at tech conferences and about tech topics. So th this is just to gather data. And there are going to be a, like, hopefully at some point, we're going to have a lot of people in there. Some of them are not going to be qualified because they were like, oh, I just want to participate. And uh, and then, and some some will be. And then that's a different, that's the next step, basically. But first, we need to get people to sign up. and. To get people who are good, like I mean, you all worked with people who are good, right? So that's that's I've seen Amelia from Rob, so that's good. Um, <laughs> so she's in there, but yeah, um, that would be the first step. Okay, if there are no questions, I think we can move to Anastasia and uh, Milat to talk about. I have one more question. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, so what we're trying to oh, share... Oh, hold on just one second. Um, hold, hold what on. What we're trying to share about the award was that uh, we cannot simply send the link to everyone. Otherwise, it would explode. For the interpreters? Uh, about, about the award. About the yeah, award. yeah, yeah. Yes, that's what they were saying. That's what they were saying. Because like for the award, if we don't control who can participate, you're going to have a lot of, yeah, it will be crazy. Like um, maybe people are not going to, I don't know. So it's like they were saying like the ways the awards work now is they let a certain group of people participate who are within the community, right? Like I think the TOC, so people who are part of the technical oversight, what is the technical oversight committee or whatever. So basically, uh, I think they vote. So it's people from the community that are known. The problem with our award is we want people with disabilities, ideally people with disabilities uh, nominate because only people with disabilities know if the companies are doing a great job. Hearing people may think, wow, they are, my company is doing an awesome job, but that may not be the experience uh, uh, people with disabilities have. So we want to be sure that whoever nominates has firsthand experience. And I think one of the criteria should be the person has to be disabled themselves and they can nominate a, their current employer or a former employer, I think as well, right? Like you have to have experience. That would be my, but like, how do we, how do we reach them? 
how do we ensure that people is at, that person is actually disabled, right? Because our team right now is small, so that's the, that's a little bit of the challenge. Because if it's just the t people on this call, that's not like a big. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I know that there's uh, some qualifiers sometimes on on submissions for awards. So maybe it is that we just add a checkbox that says, I consent that uh, this nomination is coming from a, a disabled employee or a former disabled employee. And then maybe we ask to have a co-sponsor for the award. So it's somebody with a disability in tandem with a CNCF member. And that it is those two requirements that then you are able to submit or something like that. Yeah. So what were you and, saying? Oh, sorry. Uh, just, well, um, and then, you know, if you get to a point where we're, they're a finalist, right? That's when you can actually vet the um, submission. I don't think you need to vet everybody. Well, it's just when you get to a point where you're narrowing yeah, down the list. Right. You can sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah again, time. we have a little time. Sorry. Yeah. So I think uh, we still have like a lot of time before the North America event. So by the time by the time the event is nearing, our group will slowly go on expanding. Hopefully, we're gonna have much yeah. more people. Yeah. Yeah. So we will basically, I mean, in the coming months, we will have many more submissions. Maybe in the couple of months down the line, we should be able to narrow down the list of company. Like as you said, no, I could share like my former employers or somebody who are truly inclusive, who want above and beyond in mainstreaming people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we've been growing at a very rapid rate. So um, hopefully that will continue and then we'll have a lot more people who are able to, that we can reach as well that are able to submit. Um, and hopefully one of the ways we do this is the meetup. So I'm really, I really want to hear from Milad and Anastasia, like how the meetup went, how the meet and greet went. Uh, Cause yeah, that's our new little thing. So yes, that's Milad speaking. Um... Anastasia, I don't know if you wanted to add anything, but uh, thanks. Um, last week, I remember last week uh, on Thursday, I had never thought very many people had were involved in the community who were deaf and hard of hearing, but I was shocked at how many were new and who were deaf and hard of hearing there. Um, there were like 17 or 18 people and um, it was a lot of deaf people to be in the in, in the uh, meetup. So anyway, everybody was introducing themselves and where they're from and what they do. And it was just tremendous. So um, there were three different uh, stations. And um, people were having a chance to socialize there. And then, I'm sorry, he's freezing a bit. Um, and then some people didn't have any any previous experience with where to go, what to do, what this was about. And we're just kind of in initiating the new people to some extent. And then some of the more experienced folks um, were kind of in that position as well. So, um, some people were asking me about the different stations that we had set up and I, I was trying to explain it was like local events that everyone could come to before starting the presentation and just kind of, you know, chat with people from their area and network that way. And then there was a presentation. And then after that, everyone could um, have some snacks and like a little reception and continue networking and socializing. And um, some people weren't even very technically proficient at this point that they just came to get a feel for the community there and um, get some advice and get acclimated to what the tech world might have to offer them and how to transition between those areas. So um, it was 
every, everybody seemed really happy to be there and we would like to continue doing it. And uh, that that's just my point of view. Um, Anastasia, did you have something? Yeah, just one thing I was going to talk about with the talk at the end of the time, the QA, the Q&A part, that one was really exciting. People had a chance to ask a lot of questions. So I felt that went really well. Uh, hopefully the interest will continue. This was just like the first, we need to, you know, keep going with the other uh, presentations that kind of died down a little bit. So hopefully the interest will keep going. Yes. And I would add as well that, um, how to facilitate that, you know, from the platform in terms of, It, it wasn't really very good for es esteem. Is that what? Oh yeah. The, I'm not. The so it was a real challenge for um, deaf people indeed, because because um, on the left side, there was a lot of information. It was really hard to see who was where. And, you know, it was, it was not clear what what was happening on the left side of the screen. So, and of course, hearing people understood everything that was going on because they could hear everything. And so it, it was clear to them how it worked. So um, it was a good learning experience in terms of um, having people new to this world who were deaf on the platform and um, hoping on this Thursday, we could do it again and have some better practice with Anastasia there as well. And maybe it'll go more smoothly next time. Yeah. That's great. Great. All right. Um, Anastasia and Milad um, are also gonna talk about, they've, they've finished their part. Um, let's see. We also want to, oh. Is it Destiny, Catherine has a question. Yes, thank you, Milad. Um, I just wanted to ask, well, first of all, I'm really excited to hear that the networking was so valuable because I think that's like a big part of the meetup. It's not only teaching people, but it's also the ability to have people connect to to meet each other. So they, you know, like you can learn from each other and, and, and so on. Otherwise, you can just watch a YouTube video too, right? Uh, that's the thing about meetups is that you're actually meeting people, right? So I, I, I'm really excited at, that that was valuable and that you saw a lot of new faces. Um, question, we only had planned 10 minutes for that. Is that something that we should maybe do like 30 minutes off or like a little bit like 10 minutes feels probably a little short, um, maybe 20 or I don't know. Yeah, it wasn't enough. Deaf people in general, I mean, really like more time to spend with each other it's usually double what hearing people would like you know so at least 20 um yeah i mean i don't know what it, i don't know what everybody else thinks but yeah it's really hard to limit that because if you do have to have a set time rob is saying because it'll go on for days if you don't cut it off so you will have to have the, we're getting down to business time you know you will have to do that um yeah, you'll have, they'll have to be briefed on that, pre-briefed on that instead. So yeah, so they'll have to know. And John, you know, um, you grew up with deaf people. You had deaf parents. You know how that is. Um, you know, you have to wait forever to go home, right? <laughs> so, you know, it's like the deaf standard time thing that we always joke about. It's you need a lot more time for deaf people. <laughs> Catherine, did you want to comment? Yes, yes. And the other thing that I wanted to say is like, I watched the intro of the video like a thousand times, even though I don't really understand what you're saying. It makes me so happy. You were so great. And I mean, I know that Rob and Milad have been doing this for a while. And Asaja was the first time I could tell you were having fun. You were engaged. It was, it, I don't know. It made me so happy watching it. So it's like, yeah, it was great. It was great. So it's like, yeah, it just yeah, it was awesome. Well, congrats to you all. And Anastasia, yeah, that's like first timer. You were like totally laughing and smiling and natural. It's like I would be freaked out. So it's like good on you for your first timer. It's like I I was probably a lot more serious the first time I was on a live stream. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Yeah. Um, there was a lot of expect ex expectation between you now. So um, you, now you kind of have a kit and um, you can give each other a hard time and move forward from there. Right. Yes. And with deaf meetups, you know, it's always, that's such a wonderful idea. Okay. Rob, um, did you feel like it was longer? And I mean, it was in, was it 40 minutes? Did you feel like that was enough or was there, did you feel like a few extra minutes would have been worth having or um, how did you practice? I mean, are we trying to condense that time down a little bit? For me, uh, Rob says, oh, I think it was fine. You know, um, I just was trying to go with the flow, but you know, I always try to envision making my different points and, and without, there's no really no rush. Okay. So, because if you've seen like three different events within that one event and the times that we have, we do need to follow them a little bit, but have some flexibility in there. So do you think, what do you think about the times? Well, it depends on how much more time you want to add towards the end. You know, I mean, if, do we need five minutes more or a minute more or, you know, I mean, I, I can always end early and, you know, be flexible with that and allow more time for the networking at the end. That's fine. Yeah, and there's also the time for the streaming access. So, you know, always at the end, people yeah. are like, oh, my all the blinking lights. <laughs> we got to add time for all the blinking lights. <laughs> yeah, they blink the lights. Yeah, and the presentation mode too. So you see the slides and you don't see the presenter's notes. Yeah, so it needs to be in presenter mode so that you don't see that. Um, and and sometimes it blocks out the whole screen when you put it in presenter mode. So you kind of have to have a second screen and it's hard to get everybody's attention back when you've moved to presenter mode. So there needs to be sort of a second screen for that. So that's something we can take into consideration. Okay, or, you know, they could use their phone for that part or, you know, and have that next to their computer. I mean, again, it's a learning, it's a, it's a lesson you know, that we use for next time. Yes. And we'll learn as we go and we'll maybe find new programs or new streaming services that we like better. And like I said, learn as we go, we'll just pick it up as we go along. Yeah. Great. Okay. So amazing. All right. So, um, a lot of people have a lot to say. That's fantastic. Um, about our presentation. So did you see the picture on the agenda? Did you see it? about how many people had commented on it and reached out. That was really nice. So that was great. Okay. Um, next, we're going to talk about um, Deaf and Cloud Native. And I interviewed John, what, on 16th? Was that right, John? So, um, we were talking about AI and some of you saw that it's on YouTube now. And now we have another interview on February 6th and that's with sign, sign and, and speak, sign, sign and speak. speak. And um, so it's not with sign speak. So um, Brian will be involved in that. And um, there'll be a couple of other people, right? Um, there'll be three of us doing that interview on February 6th. So that's very exciting. And hopefully um, to see many of you there too, hopefully you'll watch it. Okay, that's it for that. Oh, and um, also we'll have an interpreter for that one. Okay, so um, one from Sign Speak and one from our Rob, uh, Amelia will be there. So hopefully um, see you all soon on February 6th. Um, next. Okay, Catherine, yeah, you wanted to talk about um, working on um... message and guide. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> guide. Yes, sorry, sorry, I said that fast. All right, so message and guide. Thank you. Uh, and uh, first of all, uh, regarding uh, the deaf and uh, the, in the clout talks, uh, Destiny, and so whenever, you, before you go live, after that, post all of that in our chat Slack channel so we can, you know, promote and I mean, it's not 
exactly right. what we're it's not like officially something from the working group but it's all related we should all you know uh, uh share it and post it and help uh so it gets like as many eyeballs as possible so um don't forget to do that because you have a whole right. team here who wants to get uh all that like um increase the visibility um and then so yeah the messaging guide. So I put that at the very end because it's not like super urgent right now. But one thing that I'm working on uh, is a messaging guide. Um, and first question is like, why do we need one? Right. So our group has a very important mission, right? Like we really want to like it's very ambitious, <laughs> but we want to bring change. Right. And um, so it's important that we speak with one voice. So uh, whether you're um, talking at KubeCon or you're uh, talking to a reporter or in a live stream, it's important that we kind of agree on a certain message or how we frame it. And then uh, we stick to it and repeat it. We know like repetition is key, right? Like if you hear something once, you're not going to remember it. You need to hear it over and over and over again. And it needs to be consistent. Otherwise, you're going to be confusing people if they hear things very different. And I hope uh, Sharla agrees with me because she is in PR. <laughs> and that's basically uh, what you need to do. Um, so every time someone has an opportunity to talk to publicly, uh, have a look at that, right? Like, and then um, and, and let's make sure we we talk about like what the working group is, why it's important, and so on. That we all agree on that. So action required. Of course, I started this based on stuff that I heard from you that I learned. From you and so on um but of course it has to come it has to be something that you believe is true not me right because after all you are the uh, um you are the deaf and hard of hearing uh um the hard of a deaf and hard of hearing group so please look at it um see what's missing how can we improve it and once we get we have that nail then this would be our guiding dog right and then like every time again you have a live stream some something like look at it make sure that we talk to each, uh, like we, we repeat that message over and over again so that it finally sticks. Um, and I, I don't know, uh, Charlotte, I was going to ask you as well, like I did maybe like other questions that come up, like that was my initial thing, but it's like if, if you have any other questions that you think reporters might be interested in, or um, I think I think we're hearing people are good at is coming up with the things that we know people are curious about, you know? Uh, and then you can, you're good about like explaining it, right? So I think like sometimes there is a lot of things that you may assume people know, but they don't. Like hearing people may not know that. And it's important to educate people on that. So it's like really like working, hearing with deaf and hard of hearing is really good because then we can answer all these gaps and make sure that we really educate uh, people on all the issues that exist. Um, so that, yeah, that's it. The link is in there. Um, yeah. I would, I, I think that was all great, Catherine. <laughs> I say you nailed it. Uh, I would add, I guess, uh, if everyone's willing to hear a couple examples on some messaging that I think would relate to you in a broader sense is something um, we talk about in open source with a general audience. Why is open source important? A really quick, easy fact is open source software is behind 70 to 90% of the applications we use today. And that's the simple fact that we tell people. And then to expand on that or make it relevant, we say anything from the smartphone you're using to our critical waterways infrastructure to the Mars rover. And all of a sudden, everyone understands, right? Because those are things that people know about. So um, I think if you have any stats or quick facts that are kind of a light bulb moment that will help people understand whatever the messaging point is. That's always helpful to kind of start with one quick sentence and then you can go through the details. Yeah, and maybe you can add like, um, Charlotte, I mean, like when you, in the doc, like if you say like, oh, this would be great if we add like little comments, you know, where you think our team can like dig deeper or put some, like, you know, like just, helping guide because of course like if you don't have experience uh with this you may not know what's needed like like what is like important to kind of help uh bring that message across like kind of adding little comments where we should add something here and yeah there. De 
Definitely. And even if anyone in this group is at KubeCon or another conference and people, you know, it's important to remember if people come up to you and say, wait, what is this working group about? Um, and any other questions they ask, pop those in the doc if you remember, and then I'm happy to help with messaging. It's, but it's nice to know what questions you're getting, you know, so we can address the right messaging for those questions as well. And we have a pro in the team now, so take advantage of that. Like Charla already said, she's willing to help people get ready for interviews with reporters and all that stuff. It's like not everyone gets that service. So she's volunteering her time to do that. And then like, let's learn from Sharla. So you're like really prepared because every opportunity is important, right? Like it's hopefully we'll get many more in the future. So. Terrific. Thanks. Yes. Awesome. Great. So great. Any Perfect. questions? Today? Today? Oops. Sorry. If we're at KubeCon and, you know, if we have a message point on for that, because like at the last KubeCon, we talked about um, CNCF, deaf and hard of hearing working groups, you know, why we're doing this. And we emphasized, you know, some very salient points. And um, we intentionally are trying to grow the deaf and hard of hearing community within our group. So um, it's it's slow, but it's, it's moving forward. But now the word is starting to get on get out because of um, the next conference coming out and people learning about um, some of these meetups that we're doing and um, every every week or every couple of weeks at at Kubernetes, Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. um, for Kubernetes and then um, in the at the future Kube, KubeCon um, maybe in Paris we could you know have a Kubernetes discussion or group and then and there's one coming up in Salt Lake City and that'll be the next KubeCon and um, we can certainly discuss what messaging we want to push for that conference as well so possibly one of you um, uh, can run that committee and we can agree on some major talking points or possibly you know one and a half messages <laughs> so that we can get the word out. What do you think? Anyone? Thoughts? Destiny says, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, Sharla, is that something that you would agree with or mm, not so much? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. And I, I think to your point, uh, there's probably 20 plus good messages we could go out with, but if we could all agree on a focus for one to three, then uh, we can push that for one conference and see how that goes. Maybe it is coming up, Catherine, with a goal uh, or Destiny with a goal of what we want people at KubeCon to walk away with, knowing about the working group in general. Are we trying to recruit more members? Do we want to get some C-level advocates to talk or tell this group uh, at the conference or how to, you know, coming up with that might help us then uh, narrow down what our message should be that we're all talking about around the Cube Club. And I forgot we have the kiosk. So that's like, I forgot about my, I, I didn't forget about the kiosk, but I like the messaging and the kiosk. That is really important because that's like, what do we want to tell people? What's the message, as, as Charlotte said, that we want them to walk away? I think the kiosk is like a really, really cool opportunity right uh, so um and they're like really kind of agreeing on what we want to say and what we want people to remember is important so yeah let's uh when we look at the uh at the messaging uh guide like add add stuff uh, that you think uh that is important for that as well like i think probably the kiosk is the biggest thing I cannot believe that i didn't think about that because we're going to be there every single day for a few hours so we have to make sure that we really kind of use that opportunity Yes. Um, we can go on to the next topic as far as I'm concerned, Rob said. <clears throat> Destiny said, well, I think that was it. Yeah, okay, so yeah, that's it for now. So we're open for any questions, feedback, topics, input, anything anybody has. Oh, and one thing I did forget, um, Sandeep, um, on the chat, it says, um, why don't we create a channel 
on Slack called um, Boost so that we could use that for all posts that need to be um, amplified for visibility and brought up. And so that's a thought. And um, then if we posted there, we could have one channel where things needed to be kept and it would kind of keep things more clean <clears throat> at that point. And um, he brought that up in the chat. So you might, we might well, think about that. There is a social media channel of the CNCF. I mentioned that in another post. That is one of the ways I asked the CNCF to share stuff. So I don't know if we need like an additional one just for us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on a Slack channel, we could call it events possibly. And then we could post things there and they could be disseminated from that point. So, I mean, to Destiny's point, um, secondly, we could have a deaf and hard of hearing group um, where we could share and refer back to the event. So we could refer to each other in those Slack channels. Um, but I'm not sure how difficult it is to create a channel um, that's, you know, for only the deaf and hard of hearing working group for boosts. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's a lot or if it's if it's more helpful. I think personally, um, we could do it with the CNCF group, but it, it's a lot of stuff in that group. So I think maybe things would get lost or too far down the list in that channel. But um, we could do something like, you know, what we have been doing, just post it on our channel and then post it over to CNCF events. Um, it, we did some social media stuff recently. Is that what you were saying, Catherine? Or is there a Slack that we're not posting to? Or what was your point about that? Well, there is a CNCF social media Slack channel where anyone can, you just post stuff there that you want the CNCF to reshare. It does, it's not like crazy busy. Um, I'm not sure. So it's not difficult to create a channel, right? Uh, so I, I, but I don't know like if there are any rules because like right now the CNCF has like always like channels for teams but I don't know if like a update channel or something I don't know if there are like any guidelines because I assume they do want to maintain some sort of order because it's like I uh, otherwise it goes like completely crazy it is already crazy with how many channels there are so um, let me look into that and then uh, if it makes sense to create something that's just for social media news and whatever and then like the channel that we have now is more for um, for um, conversations. Sharla, um, yeah. she just posted something that said, um, you can tag channels like mm -hmm. the deaf and hard of hearing channel um, and maybe that would work. Um, the DHOH work, working group and you can post stuff in there, so. Um, do you, what do you mean like, I'm oh, sorry. Um, Sharla, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, I'm pretty. Somebody just left. So somebody had to leave. So Sharla, what was Sharla was saying in the, we could tag people in the channel in the DHOH and then to another channel as well to social media so that, um, the working group could have things posted to the social media channel, like with a tag. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think opposite. So something posted in the social media channel, you can tag, I believe you can tag the DHOH group. And then that way it'll show up or notify the people in the DHOH group that they've been tagged in the social channel. So you don't necessarily have to monitor the social channel all the time. But also for you to know, right? Because I've been doing that. It's like you, anyone can can post stuff there. Because I like whenever you you post something on social media, uh, feel free to post it in there as well, and just say like, "Hey, please post, uh, please share this as well," and so on. It's for anyone to use. Because I've been doing that. I also ping people on the back end if they forget. Uh, so that's an additional thing that you can do. But that's like for anyone as well to use. Yeah. 
Very good. Great. And um, we also had an amazing week last week with um, Kubernetes plus um, the deaf um, group. So thanks for that, for the cloud stuff and part of CNCF, but it, it wasn't part of CNCF, CNCF, but it was a great Kubernetes topic. So I, I didn't really want to mix the two, but I very much appreciate the support on that. And um, for cloud, um, there was a series that I'm looking to um, talk to deaf people who have, th who run or own their own companies. Um, like MJ has a company and um, so we could do like a spotlight on deaf owned and operated business in the AI space or, um, you know, the new space that we're all operating in or AI or, you know, spotlight deaf and hard of hearing people who are working in that space. So I think that's a good idea too. Um, and that's one way we can move forward on that. Um, I also would like to raise the bar for all of us deaf and hard of hearing people um, making a big impact in the community as well. And expanding on my goal to have more deaf and hard of hearing people hired into this space. So, um, because I, I really you know, want people to understand that deaf people can do it and not be reticent to hire deaf and hard of hearing people. So that was great. I appreciate the support on that. And um, for CNCF, um, the next meeting will be um, where we have like hot topics. CNCF recently um, did a hot topics and they're doing right now, um, they're talking about um, conferences and um, more focusing on technology and um, meaning that there's no presenters that um, have sign language featured in them. And I know Catherine's working on that. Um, but the parents conference, there's no signers, quote unquote signers, who will be presenting. And we want to change that as well. Um, and for Salt Lake City in the in North America, the next North America conference, we want to have people who are signing relevant technology issues on topics for technology, but done in sign language. So we want to make that relevant to the conference. And right now we should probably work towards that goal as well, instead of just talking about diversity and disability and things like that. Um, I don't know how you feel about that goal or what do you, do you agree, disagree? You said Salt Lake City, when is that? Um, Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh, no, when, when um, spring. November. No, November. yeah, this fall, sorry, sorry, it's this fall, November, November. Yeah, I know that's, there's, well, I don't like to wait till a week or two before. Um, a little bit um, off of what we've just been talking, but there was a question um, about the conference in February. It's February 27th. The next meeting. Oh. So CNCF, we've looked at their calendar and um, it'll pop up for February and um, it's, it's there. Cindy, did you want to post that link in the chat? Sorry, you had a question for me? Yeah, I was letting you know um, that we have the next meeting on February 27th. Let me look. I mean, yes, February 27th is a Tuesday. And um, 12 o'clock my time for PST. But if you look um, at CNCF, their calendar, if you search up DEF, and it will pull up events right there. So that's that's on the CNCF site as well for the 27th. And remember too, 
um, the Slack channel always have has that pinned. It's always pinned. So if you forget, it's just go to the Slack channel. It's pinned at the top. Yeah. Okay, great. Also, I wanted to ask, do we have, oh yeah, it's like every other month and it goes to the eight to eight to the 12 time slot. So for PST, so that's why it rotates between eight and 12. Is that all right, Sandeep? Is that all right? Are you good? Okay. Yeah, but anyway, the Slack channel, the deaf and hard of hearing Slack channel always has it pinned. There's always pinned links. So if you forget what, where, when, just look at the pinned links and it's all, the information is right there in the Slack channel, okay? Any questions, any final comments? I'm looking at the channel, hang on, oh, the chat rather. always always you can blame the interpreters you know it, it's death <laughs> we need better more better machine learning so um like sign speak um they should make fun of deaf people uh, in terms of um the death of the voice they should make it like a an, an opposite of the hearing world kind of um good meme kind of satirical thing they should do that yeah the reverse joke back to hearing people right mm -hmm. yeah all right i i think we can wrap up right anything else all right before we wrap up everybody good nothing for me nice to see everyone all right. Thanks. Come and see Bye. you next month. We'll see you next month. Bye.